Doesn't it seem odd that the Word of God is always humans doing all the writing and talking? Do believers ever question this fact? Matt Dillahunty said, A God who does not manifest in reality is indistinguishable from a God that does not exist. Most rational believers will even agree with this, but will respond by saying, If we had an absolute awareness of God's existence, we'd be coerced into moral behavior and would become like robots. Our choosing to do good would be irresistible if God revealed himself verifiably. As if that would be a problem for them. Isn't this excuse a bit suspicious? Ironically, it is in the Bible itself where serious problems can be found with their argument. Many notable characters in the Bible claim to have had experienced a direct communication with God and still had no trouble being disobedient. Even Abraham and Moses continued to sin. This is what we commonly know as the Christian's free will clause, and when examined more closely, fails profoundly. To argue that free will would be suspended if God manifested in reality is simply a dumbfounded assertion. Surely free will was not suspended every time God revealed himself through fire, burning bushes, smoke, dreams, bright lights, angels, or thundering voices. Furthermore, God, hiding behind a curtain if he actually exists, is despicable when you consider this God also dooms us to hell for having a lack of belief. Such behavior would be categorized as psychotic. If this God exists but refuses to show himself, this only implies a true lack of empathy and indirectly provides us with encouragement to sin or cause harm to one another. This would be similar to the state saying it is going to remove the presence of all police because it cares little about our well-being and wishes to promote more crime. This is nonsense. If God is real, he should reveal himself for real. And then, sending us to hell for lacking belief might carry a sliver of justification. This free will clause is not a valid excuse for God's lack of identification, credentials, or real-time sympathy for the tragic conditions appearing in our world today. Christians simply cannot come up with a better explanation for God's absence in the real world. Believers have a real problem here. They look at the world and see all kinds of evil and suffering of innocent people, children, animals, and must come up with a reason why God does nothing. Believers have no choice but to insist that free will is the reason for God's absence in these tragic affairs. In other words, God must refrain from intervention. Otherwise, our free will will be compromised. Christians are forced into defending this nonsensical idea. Let's think about this a little deeper. If a Christian can pray, and God will suspend free will to supernaturally answer their prayers, provide a safe ride home, win a football game, or send an earthquake to punish the wicked, then their free will argument is being violated. If God answers one single prayer with supernatural intervention, then the free will argument as an excuse for God's absence has been broken. God is not to intervene in reality for this argument to hold any water. Otherwise, God is picking and choosing when and where he manifests himself. If Christians believe that a loving God miraculously healed Uncle Jay's tumor, sobered up little Timmy, but decided not to help a baby girl escape her molester, then they have an illness of the mind and worship an extremely twisted deity. Oddly enough, Christians do suggest that God performs miracles and does intervene amongst our lives. Therefore, the free will argument 
as an excuse for God's absence in reality, does not work and becomes null and void. Nor would we lose free will if God showed himself. It is truly an illogical foundation for the Christian theology to set itself upon. If believers cannot overcome this examination, then I will raise another free will problem to the surface. This problem should be overwhelmingly obvious to everyone. What happens to free will when we get to heaven? Do we become robots? Christians will try to argue that sin and suffering is a result of free will. As we just examined, this is simply not true. What we soon discover when applying a critical analysis to this free will argument is that suffering is the result of imperfect systems or imperfect beings, not free will. Suffering has no relation to free will whatsoever, but is solely a byproduct of imperfection. In a perfect world, there would be no suffering. The interesting characteristic of imperfection is that it can be traced backwards to an original source. The free will argument ultimately leads us into an audit of accountability. Where does suffering originate? Where did the very first imperfection come from? If God is perfect, how can he create imperfect systems? That is illogical. How can something imperfect arise out of something perfect? Or if God created perfect beings, how can perfect beings become imperfect? What need would they be satisfying? An imperfect need. Where did the imperfect need come from? When we trace backwards to locate the transition from perfect to imperfect, the problem becomes unworkable. Perfect beings do not create imperfect beings or imperfect systems. Otherwise, they wouldn't be perfect to begin with. If God created imperfect beings weak enough to be corrupted, then the original source for imperfection is God. Gene Roddenberry said, We must question the story of having an all-powerful God who creates faulty humans and then blames them for his own mistakes. In Christian theology, essentially, God creates a vulnerable woman who lacks understanding of her consequences, is easily talked into damning the entire human race to everlasting hell by eating a magical apple coerced by an intelligent snake who was somehow allowed into her presence. And God places the blame on humanity? I can't help but wonder how God is not to blame. Is God perfect? Is God evil? Please follow Stairway to Reason for video number three, Evil God Trilogy. I don't believe in masquerades. I don't believe that you're okay. I don't believe that God will save. Only you can solve your problems. I don't care what they sold.